all the thoughts she is carrying on her head. She is having to stand straight to balance all those thoughts. The sphere that he's holding is that magic in his hand of the earth. My name is Nora Naranjo Morse, Kapo Kui Omu, and I come from Kapo Oinge. This is the ancient land of my people. Most of the women in my community for generations and generations have worked in clay. We are part of this earth. My life's work is in this studio. I mine my own clay. I used to watch my mother make pottery and she became one with her material. And I thought, oh, I want that when I grow up. This piece is called The Way She Leans Into Him. There is a way that I see when some woman is in love with her husband or her mate, she has a way of just gently leaning into him. I'm very careful about where these pieces go. I don't throw anything away. I, I try to find use for everything that I'm working with. This is one of three pieces that is called Healers from Some Other Place. And the interior is thousands and thousands of Walmart bags. Do you know how Walmart bags are just everywhere? Working with this repurposed material helps me think about the resistance I have about being colonized and what it is, how do I approach that through my work? How do I bring materials in that have been discarded? Material that has been tossed out and is no longer deemed important. I have brought it in, deconstructed its old use, and created something new. And what is my recovery agent, which in this case is the act of creating? The idea of what I'm doing can come anytime. I wait for it, and usually it tells me. Clay is very, uh, it absorbs water, it absorbs your feelings. You know, so I think it knows that I come with good intentions. It really allows me to experiment. I'm asking a lot from it. There have been times when I have bought my pieces back because it's been such a personal experience gathering the clay, in a sense birthing it, and then selling it for half price because the gallery takes 50% and feeling a sense of, um, what was that about? Why did I go through this whole process? What did my elders teach me? Um, how does that work? And when it became too much for me, I just thought, oh, well, I'll just buy my piece back. And one time when I did that, I used grocery money. But I brought my piece home, and I had to go through a process of understanding that as well. Like, this is the world, girl. This is what you have to do. I made this fireplace. I don't want to brag, but my dad taught me how to make fireplaces really well. They don't smoke, and they have a clean, a clean draw. I consider myself a ko, which in Tewa means auntie. I have to be very conscious about what I talk about, how I explain it, and how I hold that sacredness 
carefully so that my grandchildren and the young women coming behind me will understand that oh, sometimes those are tricky navigations that you have to go through and learn from. Nora around home Morris. There was a young woman who lived with her family in the center of the Pueblo. One day, the young woman was asked to get clay ready for making pottery. As she mixed the clay, it moved up her leg and impregnated her. Months later, she gave birth to a baby made of clay. The baby was named Jar Boy. Jar Boy was loved by the entire community. He was carried here and there by friends and relatives who considered him a precious gift from Na Chukucho, old lady clay. One day, Jar Boy's grandfather and uncles took him to the mountains to gather wood. Grandfather sat Jar Boy down near a steep trail and warned the young vessel, son, this is rocky territory. Just sit still, wait here for me. Please don't move. Those are hard words for a jar boy to hear. After a while, he grew impatient and started squirming around. And sure enough, as soon as he did, he rolled down the trail. Jar boy rolled and rolled until he hit a large boulder, breaking into many pieces. Grandfather heard the crash and ran to his grandson, but instead of finding Jar Boy, he found a human boy standing by the boulder waiting for his family. Ko'o hand-stitched clothes for all of her 10 children when they were young. You heard me right, 10 children. Forget the man of steel. I would place my bet on Ko'o any day of the week. Her hand making consistent circular motions across a landscape of coiled, dry earth formed into magnificent vessels she birthed. Carmelita S. Romero, wherever you are, Ko'o to many, ended her schooling in the third grade to become a master in the art of survival. Generals, fearless leaders, advice givers, superheroes, earth workers, who push us forward to inspire us to discover our sense of self and place. Women who anchor the next generation of Jar Boys people. Thank you.